Hi, my name's Tom Ingram. I'm a driving instructor and I've been doing it since um, 2009. One of the things that I've seen um, quite a lot is how people respond to failing driving tests. I just want to do a quick blog on uh, a, a quick uh, video here just to sort of talk a little bit about what to do if you are unsuccessful um, on a driving test. And I want to I want to do it by asking you to visualise a, a specific thing that I've just seen on a driving lesson uh, only only about forty minutes ago, and it was in the middle of a town and it was on a wide road, and it was a, a bending a bend round to the right, and on the bend itself there was a left junction a junction to the left, very very wide junction. So can you picture that we're on a we're on a road that is bending round to the right and. Uh, there is a junction over to the left, which is a very wide junction. <clears throat> we want to turn left. We want to go from the major road, turning left into the minor road. And as we're to, in the process of doing that, a driver in front of us just inexplicably stops. It looks like they're going to go left, uh, but they actually just stop the car for no apparent reason. And... It's what we do then, this this is the critical bit, this is the crucial bit to try and get your head around. Because this is what a lot of people talk about when they talk about failing driving tests. It's how they react to situations, which is a, a key skill to be able to do um, safely. So we're in this situation, we've got a choice now. We can either sit behind this driver who's just inexplicably stopped... They're not in the major road anymore where it bends round to the right. They're kind of partially on the junction where it turns left. But they haven't turned left yet. They're just like stopped in the middle of the junction. And no brake lights anymore. They've just literally stopped the car. So you then ask yourself, well, what are we going to do? Are we just going to sit here and just be behind this car? Or are we going to now try and make our way around the car? Maybe the car's broken down. Maybe whatever the situation might be. So you make the decision that, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go round the car to turn left. And in the process of going round the car, um, somebody who is in the major road, um, a vehicle sees you swerving round the car. And in the process of doing that, they have to put their brakes on and they bib. So they use their horn, they've had to put their brakes on because they want to go round in the major road, they want to go round this right bend, you've just come out into their path, making them brake. So on a driving test that would be serious, it might even be a dangerous if there was an element of danger to it. But it would certainly be a serious because your action has made some other driver have to put their brakes on and they've reacted to it because really you didn't do sufficient observations to decide when was the right time to go round the around the car that had stopped so that's what's happened your inability to react to the driver that's just stopped in the junction you've kind of gone round it you've not made adequate observations to decide when is the right time to go round. so it wasn't safe so you then have to deal with this idea of like how to deal with failing the test for that reason so you could say god so what why did that driver stop? Because when I went past when I went past the driver, I could see she was looking at a map. And so she'd stopped in the junction to look at a map. She didn't know where she was. If she hadn't done that, I would have passed the test. And I find it really annoying that I've failed my driving test because somebody didn't know where they were going and just stopped in the middle of the road. God, if only I'd been 30 seconds either side of that, that wouldn't have happened and I would have passed my test. You could say that. But then again, you could also say maybe it's the way that you've react reacted to the situation that's de uh, developed there in front of you. Because let's face it, it could be anything. It could be absolutely anything. It could be... People are going to do strange, odd, unpredictable things at times. Um, it's just the nature of driving. There is that element of unpredictability and our ability to accommodate what those situations, when those situations do develop, our ability to be able to accommodate it and still get on our way safely and efficiently. So maybe you need more practice at being able to be put into those situations so that you can then practice the skill of 
you you've got a goal in mind as to what you want to do in that case i want to turn left major road to minor road but something happens in the meantime that kind of temporarily interrupts your goal and causes you a distraction uh, an inconvenience and you and it's then your ability to be able to assess how to deal with that interruption and that distraction so that you can still get still achieve your goal of what you want to do but you're doing it in a safe manner so maybe you need more time more practice to put yourself into those situations so that you can handle them better maybe maybe that's what you need so the dvsa this summer and it's it's imminent now it's going to be any moment now they're going to stop people from being able to take a driving test within 10 working days of failing a test and that's going to become 30 days and that, like i said that's going to be any moment now uh, it's going to be the summer of 2023 so what they are in effect saying there is is that you will not be able to if you fail a driving test you will not be able to take another test for at least 30 working days so that's going to turn out to be about five six weeks because we want you to practice more whatever the reason was for your fail we want you to go out there and practice whether that be with a driving instructor or private practice or both but we want you to go out there uh, recognize the shortage in the skills that has that's been identified so that you can then go and do some proper remedial practice and improve your skill at doing whatever that thing is that's what's that's what their their view is and so all i'm really saying with this video is i mean as human as it is to be emotional and upset and and you know annoyed even about why something has happened on a driving test rather than getting too bogged down in in the you know the blame where the blame lies in other people and other road users it's just a question of like trying to just uh stick with what you're attempting to do here it's a mistake it's a, it is an error that has been exposed because of whatever the scenario was and so therefore there needs to be an improvement in the skill of of dealing with those situations that are quite unpredictable and um and so that so that you're going to be a safe driver um once you once you have passed your test that's that's what it's all about and managing the emotions so that you can um get that practice in and continue to improve um uh, even when something like that has happened not easy i'm not pretending for one second this is an easy thing to do because we're all um you know by nature we do we respond differently to these kinds of setbacks and some of us you know um, some people will react um better to these situations because they're more used to dealing with setbacks but other people are, who are not necessarily used to dealing with setbacks will will react in a different way uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here in judgment on anyone i'm just merely saying that it's not a given that you know um it's not a given that people can um process that easily on their own um when it happens um and and maybe if you're 17 18 or 19 maybe this is the first time that that's kind of happened in your life and so so we're sort of in unknown territory you know that hasn't been done before and so yeah it's a question of trying to um uh what would you raise your self-awareness of the uh need to improve whatever the skill skill is and then going about a strategy of going about practicing uh putting yourself into um these kinds of situations uh so that you know these things are going to crop up and you would then be able to deal with them you wouldn't just instantly react to it you would do the necessary assessment and then the observation so that you can keep yourself safe um and that's all i wanted to do the video on just just to talk about that sort of side of things and i i, I hope that helps people